Hi guys, today I'm going to be watching an episode of Grey's Anatomy, season 5, episode 17. I do watch Grey's Anatomy, I have watched it since it first came out, but this season came out in 2008, so it's a long time before I started training to become a genetic counselor. And in this episode, they're talking about a very rare hereditary cancer syndrome, so let's go. Patricia Shelley, 31, Megan Shelley, 27, Michael Shelley, 23. Genetic testing revealed they all carry the CDH1 gene for hereditary diffuse gastric cancer. Okay, so these are three siblings and uh, Dr. Yang said that they all tested positive for a mutation in CDH1. Um, that's an autosomal dominant condition, meaning if somebody has this condition, hereditary diffuse, not diffuse, as she said, hereditary diffuse gastric cancer. If somebody has a condition, there's a 50% chance that they pass it on to each child. So the fact that they all three inherited it is pretty bad luck because um, there's, there's only a one in eight chance of that happening, right? 50% um, times 50% times 50%. So the fact that they all got it is pretty bad luck, but at least they're all going to be going through this together. Which means what, Dr. Grant? Which means they all have a three in four chance of developing the cancer. Dr. Bailey has taken tumors out of pretty much everyone on our mother's side. Unfortunately, it's a highly aggressive cancer. The tumors grow quickly. Yeah, so this condition, hereditary diffuse gastric cancer, um, is associated with, like Dr. Uh, Meredith Gray said, about a 75% lifetime risk of gastric cancer. Um, for men, the risk is about 67%. For women, the risk can be as high as 83%. So very high risk. And um, the cancer forms in the stomach, but it doesn't form a distinct mass. The cancer cells actually scatter throughout the lining of the stomach, so it makes it very hard to detect. And usually by the time a patient has symptoms, it's usually at a late stage and the prognosis is not good. So it sounds like a lot of people in their family have died from this diffuse gastric cancer. Our family tree is down to a branch. How is Uncle Bud doing? Dead. And Aunt Helen? Dead. What about the Minnesota cousin? Not dead. She's 90 pounds and in hospice, Meg. Still not dead yet. So, uh, you've decided you're ready to take the next step. We've made a pact. We're all in this together. Cut our stomachs out, Dr. Bailey. Okay, um, so because this diffuse gastric cancer is so hard to detect, the recommendation actually for people with this condition is to have a prophylactic gastrectomy, so a preventatively remove the stomach before getting cancer to reduce the risk of getting that cancer. Um, that's the recommendation sometime between the ages of 18 and 40 is when the stomach should be removed. and. It looks like they've all decided to have their stomachs removed. What is all this? Possible side effects and complications from prophylactic gastrectomy. So post-op, you know what to expect. Malnourishment, weakness, fatigue, dumping syndrome? Oh, that doesn't sound good. A dumping syndrome is where um, the food enters the small intestine really quickly. So what happens during the total gastrectomy? The stomach is cut at the junction between the esophagus and the stomach, and then it's cut again at the junction between the stomach and the small intestine. So essentially the food bypasses the stomach and it goes from the esophagus into the small intestine. So that quick dumping of food from the, small, from the esophagus into the small intestine can lead to symptoms like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal cramps. Um, what can happen as well is that the blood sugar goes up really quickly and then comes down really quickly so that can lead to uh, sweating and heart palpitations so not not a very good side effect of total gastrectomy and it is very common possible anal leakage a gastrectomy isn't like getting your appendix out we're changing the way your entire digestive system works. This is a serious adjustment. I'm the president of my frat. 
I have a girlfriend, I go snowboarding. How am I supposed to do all that stuff when I'm suddenly this weak old man with anal leakage? You know how important this is to Trish. Trish has run our lives since we were little kids. She decides where we go to dinner, where we go on vacation, where we do Thanksgiving. I'm 23 years old. If I don't want to butcher myself, she can't make me. So you'd rather die like mom or grandpa or Uncle Bud? And it's not quick, Mike. It's a slow, painful way to go. There's a one in four shot we don't get it, right? That's something! Don't be stupid. You are doing this, and we discussed You're it. You're not in charge of me anymore! Meg? I didn't realize it was such a big deal. I just... I just need a little time to think about it, okay? This is something that can come up when siblings get tested together, not only for this condition, but other conditions where um, prophylactic surgery could be recommended, such as having a prophylactic mastectomy. It can come up where different siblings want to take different measures to reduce their risk. It's tricky because one sibling may feel very strongly about doing one option and they may be frustrated with their other sibling who doesn't want to do that. Um, so that's where some psychosocial counseling comes in. So actually these patients should really be followed by a multidisciplinary team who has experience with this condition. And that team includes not just surgeons, but a gastroenterologist, um, a genetic specialist, a counselor or, or um, psychiatrist, and a dietitian. That's really important as well to learn how to manage their health after the gastrectomy. There's obviously a lot of complications and lots of um, psychological um, issues that can come up with this condition. Excuse me, sir, I think you should feel this right here. Tell me that's not what I think it is. Looks like they found a cancer. She has it? Trish has cancer? Well, the cancer was stage one. Since we got to it so early, the gastrectomy was probably curative. So this is common. Uh, a lot of people, when they go in for their prophylactic gastrectomy, they end up finding early stage um, gastric cancer, even in patients that are completely asymptomatic, like I think this patient was. So luckily they, they caught it early. Hopefully she doesn't need any further treatment after surgery. She just had her endoscopy a few months ago. It was an aggressive cancer that grew quickly. The fact that we took out her stomach today. It saved your sister's life. So not only can it grow quickly, but um, the brother said she just had an endoscopy, how come it wasn't detected? Basically, if somebody decides not to have a prophylactic gastrectomy, what would be recommended is that they have very frequent screening by upper endoscopy, which is where a gastroenterologist basically puts um, a long, thin, flexible tube down the esophagus um, that goes through the stomach and all the way down to the first part of the small intestine. And that tube has um, a camera and a light at the end of it to be able to see the lining of the upper GI tract. So they have that upper endoscopy with multiple random biopsies to try to see if a cancer is present. But that's not a very good screening tool. Um, a lot of cancers won't be detected that way. So yeah, it sounds like she had a normal upper endoscopy. So he's a little bit surprised that she would come back with a cancer diagnosis. But that does happen in a lot of people. So that's why the recommendation is prophylactic gastrectomy. The reason Trish decides everything, Thanksgiving, dinners, vacations, she's the only one left who knows how to cook a turkey, Mike. She's the only one left who likes planning vacations, and she's the only one left who ever remembers to make dinner reservations. She's in charge of us because everyone else is dead. I want it now. I want the surgery right now. Yeah, it looks like she got really scared by that, that her sister was diagnosed with gastric cancer and that's pushing her now to want the surgery. Your path report came back clear. There are no cancer cells in your stomach. How's your pain? Uh, the wound hurts a little. Not too bad, right? Yeah. Don't you remember how much pain mom was in at the end? No. You used to help me wet her lips with an ice cube. It was awful. She couldn't even drink. 
She had so many tubes everywhere. I don't remember. I was two years old when Mom died. The only reason I know it was sad and horrible is because you tell me all the time. Hmm. I think this is why the older sister was so adamant about having the gastrectomy because she saw her mother die. And because she's the oldest, she probably saw a lot of family members die that the younger brother didn't get to see. And that is something that comes up a lot in clinic. Um, patients that have witnessed a lot of cancer and a lot of cancer deaths in their family may be more likely to want whatever preventative measures they can take to reduce their risk. When you have your stomach out, you can't eat sugar anymore. If he's doing this because he doesn't want to give up his damn jelly beans. I think it's more than that. Or football, or girls, or snowboarding, or whatever the hell it is. It doesn't matter, not compared to the alternative. Eventually, most patients, after a year, two years, their life kind of goes back to normal. They learn to adjust and, you know, they have to change their diet. Um, there is a very rapid weight loss in the beginning and, all, you know, those complications that they were talking about earlier. But eventually, you know, life goes back to normal and they can resume normal activity. So that doesn't mean that he can't have a girlfriend and can't uh, play football. But definitely your life is not normal for a period of time while your body adjusts. Well, we'll be as vigilant as we can. We'll use every screening tool available. That won't be necessary. Mikey's going to have the surgery. Maybe not today, but I'm going to be on him like glue to my dying breath until he does. And if he just wants to be left alone? You don't leave the people you love alone, Dr. Gray. That idiot may not know it yet, but my fear is what's going to save his life. So, not a very common syndrome but it's one that has very important implications for the family because we don't have very good screening tools. One thing they didn't touch on at all is that there's also a, a very high risk for breast cancer, um, about a 39 to 52% lifetime risk of breast cancer. It's a breast cancer that starts in the lobules, which is where milk is produced. And it's a cancer that can't be detected as easily on mammogram. So currently what's recommended for females with a CDH1 mutation, in addition to gastrectomy, is that they have a screening not just with mammogram, but with breast MRI. Right now, preventative mastectomy is not necessarily recommended. The National Comprehensive Cancer Network says that there's insufficient evidence at this point to be making that recommendation, but that risk should be managed based on family history. So if there's a very strong family history of breast cancer, you know, prophylactic mastectomy can be considered as well. So they didn't talk about that at all, but that's very important too. One thing that's interesting about this syndrome is that it's very rare, but as time goes on and it's becoming more and more common to do genetic testing through multi-gene panels, meaning we're not just testing one or two genes, but we're testing, you know, 30, 40, sometimes 80 genes, we're getting unexpected results. So there may be some families where we're you know, there's no gastric cancer, there's only breast cancer or a completely different set of cancers. And because we're doing these multi-gene panels, sometimes we find these uh, mutations incidentally, meaning they're not expected. And the question is what to do with these patients. Do we still talk about gastrectomy when there is no gastric cancer in the family? Obviously that's a very difficult decision to, to take. And there's still controversy about that, whether we should be recommending gastrectomy or not. But in some studies that have looked at these patients that have undergone gastrectomy, even in, in the absence of a family history, a lot of them are found to have early stage gastric cancer. So these are genetic test results with very important implications medically and psychologically, as you saw. So I think it was a really interesting episode. If you have any ideas for any other episodes that you'd like me to react to, please leave it down in the comments. And if you have any questions about this syndrome or any other cancer syndrome, also please leave it in the comments. And if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe and I'll see you next week. Bye.